much for joining us on Football Focus. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Right, into the EFL we go now on Football Focus. And if you thought the situation at Barca was an interesting one, it's nothing compared to what's been going on at Derby in recent times. Right, hold on one moment. Clem's been to find out about the rebirth of the Rams. They were 90 minutes away from the Premier League three years ago. Now they're in the third tier for the first time since 1986. <laughs> Along the way, they've had financial irregularities, points deductions, failed takeover bids, administration, legal bids from rival clubs. But thanks to a publicity-shy local businessman and lifelong supporter, David Close, the Derby County soap opera might just finally be over. A word to describe your time at Derby County? <laughs> One word. Um, it's a good question. I would say, you've got me there, you've got me caught. Probably incredible is, is the word because so much adversity, so many problems. At the same time, a group of people that have stuck together through thick and thin, their fans, the local community, the staff at the club, the players, is something that I'll never forget and I'm still proud to be a part of now. How do you not ingest it, take it home, let it weigh you down? Or do you? Yeah, you do. no, you do. You take it home. You've spoken to people um, about relationships, families. You can't just leave the training ground and switch off from it. It affects your everyday life. It, you know, a lot of people are really, really ill because stress causes illness. Do you think it got to Wayne in the end? Is that the reason for his departure? It, it got to all of us. The reason I think it affected Wayne so much is he cares about people and he had to carry the brunt of everything that was happening. He had to walk in every day as the leader of the football club and pick people up. That coach's office was like a sanctuary to us because the way we could deal with the situation was to make each other laugh. We had to help each other stand in front of the players or take a session or give a meeting when things were happening around us completely out of our control. I'm trying to imagine the scent of relief when David Close signs on the dotted line and this whole saga is finally over. I think relief is a complete understatement. It's been one heck of a roller coaster. To be going into July with the number of players we had, staff moving on to make sure that their families are looked after for stability for themselves and security. If it had carried on much longer, I'd have been really worried about what state we'd have been in. But thank goodness we didn't have to endure that. And that's why now you've got so many smiles on people's faces around the place. Lucy, how does it feel be standing here on the training ground with your beloved football club? You are saved. Yeah, it was amazing, that feeling. The last sort of month or so was the worst for me because um, we kind of kept getting told we were saved and things were sorted and then obviously it collapsed. Derby is like, it's everything to a lot of people. So we knew there had to be fans out there. Um, we kept getting told there were people out there that would save the club. Um, and it's brilliant that it is somebody local. David Close is keeping a very low profile. Can you give me a little flair for what the man's like? He is low profile. He's humble. He's polite. He cares about people. He wants the best for the club over the long term and for it to be sustainable. And it's my job to, to make sure that that happens. The 12 signings you have made, mm -hmm. did you have most of them lined up? Yeah. Some of them were calling me, is the takeover done yet? Is the takeover done yet? You know, they, they wanted to be here. There's still a heck of a lot to do, obviously. I mean, one of the things that's been pointed out to me is you still haven't... Well, you haven't got a shirt sponsor, but you haven't got an away kit, even. We've had just over a month to rebuild the club. It's a totally new entity, totally new business. There's a, been a bit of a perfect storm with the kit side of things because every football club in the country is struggling because of manufacturing issues, and ours has just been compounded because of the administration, but hopefully won't be too much longer. If we can get back to the championship and then push again, brilliant, but... I think at the minute stability is what we need and that's what I think most Derby fans want in the very short term at least. The first game of the season with 31,000 people. It was actually quite emotional at, at 10 to 3 when we opened the doors to walk out and it was a... Wow, and you're an accountant at this. You got emotional. <laughs> there was definitely a lot of emotion. Just that relief, but also knowing where we've come from. We've just got to take one step at a time now and, and move forward. 
wherever Clem goes, the, sh <laughs> the sun is always <laughs> shining. Right, it's great to see some long-awaited hope also for Derby fans, isn't it? And Derby host Barnsley in League One this afternoon. And Kelly Summers is here to fill us in on the rest of the headlines in the FL. Love it when you pop in, Kel. Yes, that's <laughs> me. I would have bought my sunglasses if I'd known that was the theme of the day. I've told Dion to stop bringing his uh, daughter's sunglasses <laughs> to work. Uh, let's bring you up to speed with what's already happened in the Championship this weekend. As you can see, last night Watford ended Vincent Company's unbeaten start to life as Burnley manager. Watford won 1-0 at Vicarage Road. It was a stoppage time goal at the end of the first half from the birthday boy Tom Cleverley that got them all three points. But as you can also see, Burnley had a fair few chances. Josh Brownhill in particular will still be wondering how he didn't score yesterday. Watford did also have Hassan Kamara sent off on the 81st minute too. But they held on, meaning they've taken seven points from nine possible under their new manager, the former Forest Green Rover boss Rob Edwards who is now in charge and look at that Watford fans I'm sure you're enjoying seeing that you are currently top of the championship table though you have of course played one more game and Blackburn Rovers just below you there don't even play today so Watford could still be top later as well Blackburn the one team with a 100% record in this division they play West Bromwich Albion tomorrow here are the rest of the fixtures to have a look at as you can see Cardiff City versus Birmingham has already got underway Cardiff City are one nil up in that one they'll be looking to bounce back after a really disappointing loss in the League Cup in midweek. They lost to League One side Portsmouth. Uh, lots of other games there intriguing. Norwich City still looking for a first victory of the season against Hull. Hull and Stanley are unbeaten, as are Sunderland into League One, where there is just one team with a 100% record. That is Peterborough United. They played Plymouth for the second time in a week, having played them in the EFL Cup as well. And into League Two very quickly, Five teams with a 100% record in a really strong league. The game at the bottom of my screen is the pick of the bunch, though. Walsall versus Stevenage. Two teams flying 100% record. Stevenage now managed by Steve Evans. And also, Alex, a shout-out to all of those lower league teams who beat championship opposition. 11 championship teams went out of the EFL Cup in midweek. Shows there is plenty of quality in the lower leagues. And as always, I'll have all of the updates from all three divisions in the EFL from 2.30pm on the Red button on final score. Love that, Kel. Love the little shout out as well. <laughs> See you in a couple of hours. Thank you yes. for popping in. Right, more news from the week and the nominees for the Ballon.